Okay, hi everyone. So um, in this video, we're going to take a look at the first chapter of the Python for Mathematics book. And this chapter is just about installing the software and then using it in uh, using the very first kind of setup of how we're going to use the particular programming language we're using, which is Python, and the, the system we're going to use to speak to Python. There are various ways of doing that. Um, uh, and the one we're going to use is something called notebooks. So let's get started. So here's the, the book and the very first uh, chapter, I'd encourage you to read the introduction as well, but the very first chapter is uh, on using notebooks and the introduction gives a bit of an, uh, uh, an overview of what we're, we're looking at. And then if we click to the, the tutorial, here we are. And so the start is about installation. I've already got it installed on my computer, so I'm not gonna do that. But if we read the instructions, it essentially says, click on installation and if we do that, and go here, it takes us to Anaconda, which is a distribution of Python. And again, there's a bit more information about that um, later on in this chapter. And if we scroll down, uh, sorry, if we click on uh, download, it just scrolls us automatically down here. And here you can choose which version uh, you want. If you're on Windows, you almost certainly want the 64-bit installer. If you're on Mac OS, I recommend you use the graphical installer. Um, and if you're on Linux, you probably know what you're doing. Um, but if you want to get in touch with me, if you have any questions, let me know. So once you install those, um, run the installers, you'll have it on your, on your machine. At which point, if we get back to the, the tutorial, what we want to do next is to start a, a notebook server. Okay. And so on Windows, open up a piece of software called the Anaconda prompt. You've just installed that with your Anaconda distribution in the previous step. And uh, on OS X, sorry, on OS 10, so on, on, on Mac OS, uh, we're going to open up the terminal. I'm running Mac OS here, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to open up Spotlight, and I'm just going to type terminal there. And that'll open a, a window. Uh, that'll open a window that looks something like this. Um, maybe not exactly uh, like that. Uh, for example, I have dark mode uh, set up, so, and I have various other little uh, personalizations that might make that a bit different. But fundamentally, it looks like that. And if we look at the chapter of the book, you'll see you get the same kind of uh, screenshot as what you're seeing currently on my screen. And um, here is what would probably be uh, what you see on your computer if you're running Windows. And then in here, we type Jupyter with a Y and notebook. Note that there has to be a space there has to be a first uh, um, and then no space between notebook. You have to type it exactly as we do. And then we press the enter button. And when we do that, the first time you do this, this might take more or less time than what we're seeing there. But what you see is a website opening. Now, when I say a website, that's not quite right because a website means it's on the web, on the internet. This is running on your computer. So I could be uh, in a submarine very far from the internet and I could still do this, okay? So no, this is running on your computer. And in fact, the website that's running it is on your terminal, right? So this little terminal, this little command line application is essentially running this in the background. So we need to keep this open. If, this, uh, if you close this at some point, then the, the software we're using will break. Um, so we'll just minimize that and keep that out of the way. And then what we see here are just your files on your computer, okay? So you can see the desktop. If I click on desktop, there's actually nothing there on my computer. I like to keep my desktop tidy, uh, but my pictures, various little folders, and a couple of other, other things that are, are there, okay? Um, and so we're going to use this to, uh, throughout the first part of this book. And so if we scroll down, we're going to create a new notebook. And so I'll go back. Uh, let me just close this tab go back here and I click on new, you might not have, well, you'll almost certainly not have this opt memory one uh, option here. Uh, that's something else for a research project I'm doing. But if you'll see, you'll see this Python 3 uh, option here. It might be something else. It might just say Python, depending on, on, on various little things, might be slightly different. But essentially, you want under the notebook to use the Python one. And if we click on that, that opens up something that looks like this. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is change the title of this. And we're just going to call this Introduction because this is our introductory tutorial. Okay. If I go back to uh, the tutorial, I'm just following along with the steps. And that's what we've done. We've changed that uh, to call it Introduction. Okay. 
And now just to see what's happening in the background, this is a file on your computer. So we're going to open up something that allows us to navigate the files on our computer. Um, on Windows, it's your file explorer. On um, OS X, it's the Finder. So if I, I open that up, Finder opens up. You can see a bunch of different files on my computer there. Um, and if I go uh, to my the home directory, we can see that introduction.ipython notebook is right there. So what the tutorial is asking us to do is to create a new directory called CFM and inside that directory call it uh, NBS, short for, for notebooks. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So on my desktop, and again, do this wherever you want, wherever is convenient to you. I create a new folder. I'm going to call this CFM. I quite like short folder names, uh, mainly because I do a lot of work um, in the command line, and, and so typing short folder names for default things is quite helpful to me, but don't necessarily feel obliged to choose the same names I'm choosing, although keep in mind that later on in the tutorial, if we're referring to things, that we're referring to the ones I'm using here. Okay, so and then in CFM, create NBS. All right, um, so if I go back and just grab this introduction that I Python notebook, and I'm just going to drag it, drag it to my attempt to drag it to my desktop. Inside my desktop, I'm going to now attempt to drag it to the CFM folder, and inside the CFM folder, attempt to drag it to the notebooks folder, and it's just in there, okay? Now, I can't actually double click on this to open it because my computer doesn't know how to do that. And there's some more information in the further information on this chapter about why that is. But if we go back to our notebook server and I go to my desktop, now remember this desktop directory was empty. So now if I go to my desktop and I go to CFM, inside of that there's an NB's uh, directory and inside of that there's this introduction.ipython notebook. And if I click on that, that opens this notebook. It's just the same one, but we've moved it around, okay? So that's just a good exercise in realizing that these files are on your computer in the specific places. So for example, if you wanted to email one of them around, you could do that. You could navigate to it in your file explorer, attach it to an email, and send it around, okay? So if we go back to the tutorial, let's see what it's asking us to do next. So write some basic Python code. And so all that's saying is, in here, this is this little box here, if we type 2 plus 2 or uh, some other numerical manipulation, and if we click on Run, we get the output. So the input is 2 plus 2 and the output is 4. Um, we could do something else. We could do 33 minus 56. And instead of pressing the Run button, clicking on the Run button, I'm going to press Shift and Enter on my keyboard. That just does the same thing. I just find it a lot quicker to shift and enter. If you're happy with your mouse to just go to, to the run, then that, that's fine. And that's some very basic Python code. It's essentially a very complicated way of, of getting a calculator running, right? Uh, um, but, but as we'll see, we'll, we'll, we'll start doing more sophisticated things. So the next thing, and this is really what is very nice about Jupyter Notebooks, and this is what this interface here is, is that we can interface both a Jupyter Notebook and our writing. So we can write mathematics directly in a notebook and then include calculations as well. We will see in the second half of this book other ways of speaking to Python and using Python, but in terms of using Python and using it as a communication tool, this is really where Jupyter Notebooks shine. And so on a given cell, we can change that to Markdown. And here we can write things. So uh, theoretically, I should copy in exactly what's written there, but I, I don't exactly remember. So I'll type something along the lines. Uh, we can use Markdown within a Jupyter Notebook to write alongside our results. And then we can do various things to kind of format this. So we can use uh, enumerated lists like this. And we can also include mathematics. If I just remind myself what we've got there, yeah. So we, oh, we say, I, I want to write some mathematics. We open this with two slashes and a, and a, and a, uh, a, left, a left parenthesis. And then there are various commands that we are going to learn to display some mathematics. So as I'm writing this, have a guess at what that might display. And let's write something else. Um, I'm 
can close that down. And now if we run the cell or press shift enter, this markdown renders, okay? So we've got a fancy fraction that's written, we've got this summation that's written, and that's something that we can do within a Jupyter Notebook. So theoretically, we could write out a lot of our mathematics as well as including code next to it. We just have to remember to change the cell. So on a rendered cell, if we double click on it, it goes back to the source for it. And within this chapter, if you go to the how to section, there's a lot more information on some of the LaTeX that we can, we can write, okay? Um, LaTeX being the particular way of including mathematics. Sorry, I, I might not have mentioned. Right, and then the final thing we're, we're gonna do in this tutorial is if we go back here, there's all sorts of options that, that I encourage you to take a look at, and if you have questions, get in touch. But if you click to download, and then there's all sorts of different options for what we can download. But we're going to click on HTML. And that's actually just downloaded the file as if I was on the internet. I'm not on the internet, um, but it has just downloaded the file. And so if I, if I go to my downloads folder, we'll see a number of uh, different, let's open the wrong one. If I go to my downloads folder, we'll actually see introduction dash two is because I've actually downloaded this already. And if I double click on that file, that just opens it up in the HTML version of the file. So this is a static file. I can't run code or anything, but it's just a really portable way of uh, taking these documents that we write and giving them to anyone so that they can read them anywhere, okay? Uh, HTML is the most lightweight version and it's a, a so, taking our Jupyter Notebooks, exporting them to HTML, and then emailing that means they can, or sending that to someone in any way, means they can read that in any way they, they can. And again, note that this file is not on the internet, it's just on my computer, and I'm using my web browser to read it. And that's all that we wanna do in this, in this tutorial, and we haven't in the tutorial installed it, but we've uh, seen how to, and hopefully you've installed it. We've started a notebook server, we then created a new notebook, we actually then move the file around, and then we ran some very basic Python code, just when we ran two plus two, wrote some markdown, and we saved our notebook to a different format. As I, as I mentioned before, when you're going through these tutorials, I don't want you necessarily to worry too much about how or, or, or why you're doing things. Um, it's more just to work through this and see the outcomes, okay? Then, I'd like you to read the how-to section, and here is where you might start writing your own notes, start having more questions, understanding how what's written in the how-to section relates to what uh, we did in the tutorial. And for example, we can see uh, some information about writing LaTeX here, so how to do various things, um, how to have a matrix, how to write integrals, the summation we did, and then saving the output in a different format. Then when you're ready, I'd encourage you to work through the exercises. When and if you want, the solutions are immediately there available to you, but I recommend uh, letting yourself get uncomfortable with the exercises first. And by that, I mean maybe not immediately knowing how to do something, but struggling with it a little bit and um, possibly even asking questions, getting in touch on the Discord or otherwise. And then finally, when all that's done, uh, take a look at the solutions. Through that little bit of a struggle, um, you, you, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll learn, okay? And finally, if you're interested, if you go to the further information section, you can uh, go and find more information about all these things. So for example, some of you maybe when you, if you've learned Python before, um, you might have used a different interface than Jupyter, and you might wanna have a bit more information about why we're using Jupyter in this course. Um, bit more information about uh, about the LaTeX and various other things, and all that is is there. And as and when people ask me questions, I might even add more information there. So again, we've seen how to install Anaconda. We've started Jupyter Notebook uh, server. We've created a new notebook. We found it. We've run some basic Python code. We've carried out basic mathematical operations, arithmetic operations, two minus two plus two, pardon me. Uh, written some markdown, written some basic LaTeX within the markdown, and then we've downloaded our file uh, to HTML, which is a lovely way of sending it back and forth. So I now encourage you to go ahead and work through that. By all means, if this video is helpful, come back to it and watch me go through the steps again. Um, then 
work through the how-to section. Maybe that's where you start writing your own notes on this and then attack the exercises. Uh, good luck and uh, speak to you soon.